Hey guys, two in one day. That's why I have the same outfit on. Um, I apologize for the weird lighting. I have my outdoor plants inside and I have an ultraviolet light on them. So that's what that is. So today we're going to talk about selling our comics at conventions. And I think this is a topic that I am pretty uniquely suited for. In case you guys don't know, I'm one of the co-founders of howtobeaconartist.tumblr.com and I have been selling comics at conventions, specifically anime conventions, for like the past seven years now. And I have done over a hundred conventions at this point, so I have learned a lot. And sometimes I've learned the very hard way. I've sold everything from hand assemble minis to copies of my comic, Seven Inch Kara, which you can pick up at natosuit.com slash Kara hyphen comic, and I'd love it if you did. This is volume one, as well as copies of other books that I've worked in in anthologies. And by anthologies, I mean like this copy of Ladies Night, which will be available from me this year or Hannah Doki Kira, or Chainmail Bikini, or Once Upon a Time, or the SCAD Travel Anthology, or hopefully coming to print this year, the 1001 Nights Lady Night Anthology. So I have a lot of comics and a lot of books. Now, primarily um, my focus at conventions when I'm doing anime cons is twofold. One, I wanna sell copies of Kara. I am there to sell my baby. That would make me happy. If I sold 100 copies of Kara and nothing else, I'd probably make the same amount of money give or take, as I would selling fan art and other things, but it would make me way happier. Unfortunately, that is just not a reality at most anime cons. Anime cons are focused on more so Japanese things than they are on things made here in the US, but that doesn't mean you should dismiss that audience. Um, my best sales are at anime cons. My target audience tends to be at anime cons. Um, my target audience, for Kara, um, I thought it would be early reader girls ages 8 to 12. I'm having a hard time hitting that demographic because I just don't know a whole lot of parents. Um, but the people, sorry, this is my butt cat. Um, the people who end up buying it tend to be teenage girls age 20, I mean 12 to 20. So that anime cons are perfect. Oh my god. Ah, his claws are in my leg. Um, he just is an idiot. And now his claws are caught in my jeans. So, um, that is an audience I am not gonna find at indie cons. I'm surely not gonna find at superhero cons where they still treat girls pretty crummy. Um, so anime cons are usually where I get the most sales. So, um, I need to figure out a way to share with you guys some pictures of my kind of recent-ish setup so you guys can get an idea of how I um, organize the table. If I can't insert those in the video, I will have them linked below. So that'll give you guys some insight on how I sort of deck out my table. But I have a very dedicated table theme and it's sort of like the cute picnic or the friendly picnic or like the cute picnic in the forest. So a lot of green, a lot of natural colors, all of that ties in with Kara, which is watercolor. So at my table, I sell a lot of original art. I sell a lot of um, fan art but the originals of that fan art. So I'll do watercolors and then I'll sell those watercolors and then that's it, that's gone. And something that's important to me is um, I want people to see art and original art and owning original art as something that is accessible and something that is in their grasp. So I do tend to price my art much lower than the market would normally call for because it's really important to me that people are able to have an appreciation for original art and appreciation for artists. So I would way rather than buy my originals for less than overpay for one of my prints. But that's how I personally feel and I know a lot of artists disagree with that and that's okay. But that's how I feel. I'm trying to train a new generation of people to actually love original art and um, I'm having all right success at that. So something that is behind me and is really important is my portfolio 
And let's see if I can do this on selfie mode. My portfolio with my original pages. So I always dedicate space for 7-inch Kara on my con table. If I can't put Kara on my table, I'm not going to be at that show. That's how important it is to me. Selling my comic that I work on is way more important than taking commissions, which I love to do. Way more important than selling fandom stuff, fandom merch. Honestly, even more important than talking to people about being an artist, which you guys know is super important to me. That is how important selling Kara is for me. And there are a lot of artists, at least on the East Coast, who have quit selling their comics at anime cons because it's hard to move them. It is harder to get to convince people to give them a shot. But these are some things that I've found that have helped. One, my table signs all feature Kara drawn in a very attractive chibi style. I mean, big eyes, super cute, bright colors, and those are my price signs. So she is all over my table. Two, my table's theme is tied in with my comic. So if people like the aesthetic of my table, they are probably going to like the aesthetic of my comic. Three, I only do fan art of stuff I enjoy. So that is always an opportunity for me to talk more about the things I love including the comic I made. So if you like cats, if you like tiny people, if you like watercolors, if you like Studio Ghibli, you'll probably like Seven Inch Kara. It's a charming story about a diminutive little girl and her big adventures in the outside world. Most people who like Ghibli stuff are going to like Kara. Now it does mean I have to hear endless, just like Arietti, which has thankfully toned down because it's like one of my least favorite Ghibli movies. <laughs> and not because of Kara, I just really didn't like how they handled it for the US adaptation. But I did grow up loving The Borrowers and Little House on the Prairie and other books that are sort of adventures of, about girls um, of about a certain age, usually like 10, 11, 12, um, and discovering outside world. And it was really important to me to do a coming of age story about a girl because there's just not a lot of that in American, in American literature. It was also really important for me to set it in Louisiana because that's where I'm from. So when I'm in Louisiana, I mention that, oh, this is set in Hanville. Oh, do you like cats? Kara rides a cat. You see this cute black cat? She rides that cat. Um, those are all talking and selling points. I have the book towards the front of the table. I have a copy, a demo copy that's open. And I really need to redo this because it's a couple years. Oh, no, this isn't the copy with that. I have a little standee that's in the book that's like, take a peek. And I need to do a color version of that. Um, and I have my book open and I have my portfolio open and people, I mean, parents especially will casually flip through the portfolio. That's an opportunity to talk about. It. It's an opportunity for me to talk about how much I like quality children's education, quality children's literature, how devoted I am to that, how serious I am about that. Um, if they have daughters, I engage them on um, finding good stuff for their little girls, good stuff that doesn't provoke, promote violence, good stuff that provo promotes problem solving and understanding. If we have little boys in the picture, we talk about um, some of those same things because there's a lot of parents who are becoming more open-minded and understanding that little boys need to be taught empathy just like little girls do. But we talk about friendship, adventure, problem solving, cat riding. So um, those are all opportunities to talk about my book. I would say my tabletop real estate for Kara, it's about half of my table is dedicated to Kara. Now, could I make twice as much money if I just filled that with fandom stuff? Oh yeah, but that's not why I'm doing cons. I'm doing cons for this comic. All that other stuff helps me break even and it does help me pay the bills, but the comic is more important. And that's another reason why I also do commissions. Well, I love drawing for people. I love making people happy and I love drawing their OCs and I like drawing portraits and stuff like that. Um, but doing commissions shows people that I am a skilled artist and it often instigates an interest in the comic itself. So I'm always trying to, um, at shows, turn my work for the most part. Um, like I am there to work, I am there to sell, I am there in a, rep as a representative of the artist who is myself and as a saleswoman. So um, my focus is always selling my comic when I can. And I used to be more hesitant about being pushy because I know a lot of really shy kids attend anime cons and they don't like the hard sell. But if you're hanging out at my table for 30 minutes, I'm gonna start pushing that comic. 
Um, if you're like just standing in front of my table, talking to my, your friends, blocking my table from uh, paying customers, I'm gonna start pitching my comic. If you are there and you're like in the vicinity, I'm not gonna yell at you. But if your booty is touching my table, which happens, y'all know it, come on, Connor and Iris, y'all know that happens. Or you put your Starbucks on my table or something, I'm gonna start pitching you my comic because you're in my zone, you're in my shop. I am here to help you. So um, my focus is just pretty much, um, yeah, I'm there to make money, but my real focus is there to sell the comic. And I think, um, I know it's hard and it's taken me a lot of time and a lot of years to get this moving and I'm always adding new things and I'm always finding new things. I'm always tweaking the equation to try and bring in new interest. Um, since it's taking me a while to work on volume two, I'm about, I'm a little over halfway done, I would say, because chapters five and six are done and I'm working on seven and I think there might be um, it might be like chapters five through nine, maybe even five through 10 in book two, but it's watercolor, so it takes a while. Um, I have pages from volume two in the book. So returning customers who want the next book, oh, hey, here are the new pages, this is coming out. Or for people who liked Kara, oh, hey, you might enjoy, I need to grab a recent run one, so I guess, all right, okay, if we're at an anime con, now, look, to be fair, my stuff is kid friendly. This cover is not kid friendly. I didn't get any say in this cover, okay? I wrote a story in this. It's a story about Yakitori and it is about me and my friend Heidi when we went on the SCAD trip to Japan and we got ourselves it lost a little bit in um, Tokyo off of like Nagoya Broadway. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Nakano Broadway. And we end up at this tiny Japanese restaurant with no English. So um, you guys are going to have to order, eat it up to find out how that ends. But this a phenomenal artist, Ify, did the art, because that's how Ladies' Night works. They they break out, if you're like an artist who draws, I mean, an artist who writes or a writer who draws, they're gonna pair you with somebody else. So it was new for me, because I never got to write for somebody. But hey, if you are at an anime con, and this book didn't quite have that cover, I gotta fix that, um, you would really, really, really enjoy a story about Yakitori, because it is about being in Japan and having a Japanese experience, and a little bit of culture shock, and definitely being out of your depth. So if you like Kara and this had a different cover, I might pitch this at you. Or if I still had copies of Hanadoki to sell, I would definitely pitch this to you because A, it is a shoujo anthology, so it's full of gorgeous art, and there's actually a Kara side story in here. So if you like Kara, you might like this. Or if you like Kara, you might enjoy Chainmail Bikini, which is a, um, an anthology of like girl gaming experiences. And my story in this one, let me see if I can find it, yeah is about a D&D campaign. But it's about this girl who rolls, um, her character is a magical girl, and she's like a little girl, a magical girl, and they're fighting an orc. It's pretty pallid in Critical Missy, and it's in Ink Wash. So if you like Kara, and if you like cute kids, and you like magical girls, and you like watercolor or ink wash, you would probably like my story in Chainmail Bikini. So, um, or if I'm not selling anthologies because I'm spooled out of them because I only have so many, or um, I'm still waiting on my anthology to come out, I'm selling minis. So if you like Kara, you, sh you would enjoy this year's sketchbook. If you like Kara, you would enjoy this year's, um, my Inktober compilation, which would be 31 Days Under the Waves, the mermaid one. So um, while I do have other things at my table to attract people who enjoy fandom things, um, and it's always fandoms that I enjoy, so there's always that connection there as well, um, there's definitely always a push to move commissions, to move Kara, to move other books. And it's not because I make more money from those, because I really don't. Um, when I did the first print run with Kara, these books are $10 each. I sell them for $15 and I include a wooden charm. I really just want you guys to give this comic a shot. So I'm not making, I'm making more of a profit on literally everything on the table. If we're going by margins, my margins for everything else are better than Kara. But this is what I dedicate space to and this is what I care about. Um, it doesn't necessarily make business sense in the immediate sense, but this is my legacy. This is what I'm working on and um, so that's where I put the space, that's where I put the time, that's what I give the focus to. So I am going to find a way to show you guys some pictures from my con setup. Hopefully that'll inspire you. Hopefully that'll help you out. She's also on my banners. I should have mentioned that. Like she is super prominent. Except the only problem is now that I've grown my hair out, people are like, oh, is that you? And it's like, no. Um, 
So that doesn't help, but uh, if your main character doesn't look like you, that would probably be a good conversation starter. So if you have suggestions for pushing your comics at shows that do not traditionally support comics, let me know in the comment section below. Oh, I forgot to mention, I also do panels. So when I'm doing watercolor panels, guess what I'm showing examples from? When I'm doing marker panels, guess who's on the example art and guess who's on like the, hey, color along with me, handouts. It's always Kara related stuff because that's what I care about. That's what I like to draw and that's what I want to do. So, um... I'm always trying to stay focused on that and I wish I could make this channel more focused on that but I'm working on that too because I want to educate you guys and I want to help you guys um, but I also want to talk about my baby and uh, people are like you should tweet about it more and it's like I don't know when I'm talking talking it comes a lot more naturally but when I'm tweeting I'm usually like in like firebrand mode so I don't necessarily want to talk about the specifics of my comic. But yeah, if you guys haven't checked out volume one of Seven Inch Carol, you should totally do that. If you've liked it, if you've read it and you want some more, uh, chapter five is up on my Gumra. That's the first chapter from the second volume. Chapter six should be up shortly. The delay is I need to record that, e that lettering tutorial that I promised you guys. And I'm waiting on like CPU. Um, I'm basically waiting for my computer to not be busy doing other things and um, it would take a while to be edited anyway because I have a super exciting announcement for February that I am pumped to share with you guys but I can't say anything about it yet. But anyway, chapter 6 will be joining chapter 5 on Gumroad soon and I'm working on chapter 7. So upcoming videos will hopefully have some chapter 7 goodness in it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I inspired you. I hope I gave you some ideas. Um, keep an eye out for those pictures. Not sure if they're in this video. Not sure if, um, if I'm going to link them below, but I will make them accessible for you guys. And I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye!